Scientists have uncovered the first large-scale interconnected bridge between two galaxy clusters some 10 million light-years apart. This bridge is not static, but contains a sea of highly accelerated particles moving between these two super galaxy clusters. Another electrical phenomena detected, but what exactly is causing it? It is not as straightforward as it first appears. For some time we have known that our universe is covered with a network of filaments which interconnect all corners of our universe. Mainstream science believes that these are remnants left over from the Big Bang. In theory, the Big Bang should produce a homogeneous universe with an even distribution, not a filamented structure. So in order to account for this, dark matter is required to cause a sort of lumpiness to create the observed structure. To date, no one has ever detected any dark matter, nor do they agree on what it actually is. In the Electric Universe model, these structures are predicted and are vast cosmical Birkeman currents which interconnect our entire universe. Until recently, scientists believed that these filaments were dead structures, but in their search for dark matter, in these filaments they have uncovered that far from being dead, these filaments are filled with plasma. More interesting is that we now know that galaxies will arrange themselves along these filaments, and large clusters of galaxies form where these filaments intersect. Again, in an EU model, this is what we would expect to see, galaxies forming along these currents. And as they carry material from one side to the other, it allows for the creation of stars and galaxies. But it also provides the energy in the form of moving currents and magnetic fields. For the first time ever, scientists have managed to detect radio waves emanating from the space between a pair of galaxy clusters. These radio waves can only have been produced by very fast-moving particles which are moving across one of these magnetized filaments. These particles are moving at relativistic speed, and they believe that something is causing a shock wave to accelerate the particles, but in the image it is not directly obvious what might be causing it. From this image, it can clearly be seen that there is material that extends between the two. The kind of yellow coloured overlap shows this area of connection. From an electric universe perspective, what is not clear is whether this is the only part of the connection that is active. So we know that there are these filament structures and we know that these clusters are formed at two uh, intersections between filaments. Now clearly there is a connection between the two, but are the other parts of the Birkeland current also active providing energy? Birkeland currents would not normally produce these kinds of emission as the magnetic field is normally aligned with the direction of the current. Now I've heard people suggest that this uh, phenomena that we see here is like the plasma sheath of planets. So we know that, that um, both Mars and Earth and Venus have plasma sheath, Jupiter as well. And we know that Venus's uh, plasma sheath does extend and sometimes overlaps with Earth, depending on the activity on the Sun. And certainly this is what Velikovsky's idea was when uh, he saw that Mars and Venus at some stages would approach close to Earth and that plasma sheath would then interact with Earth's plasma sheath, causing massive disruptions to planet Earth. The problem is that these plasma sheaths do not normally produce these types of radio waves and in order to produce these patterns the electrons must be spiraling and this means that the magnetic field cannot be aligned with the current flow. Now double layers would be able to produce these effects and we've talked about this before when we looked at uh, Alvin's galactic circuit and they could also account for the acceleration of the particles. And we know that double layers can form along Birkeland currents. And again, we're seeing a large Birkeland, uh, potentially a large Birkeland current in the fact that they are connected via these filaments. Um, and they're obviously formed at the intersection between filaments. So is that what we're seeing here? And as the galaxy clusters move closer together, is more energy being driven into that uh, connecting Birkeland current, thereby creating additional double layers uh, along the path. 
I mean, the problem is this is very different to a double radio source where the strength of the radio signal drops as it moves further away from the double layer. And here what we're seeing is, is a much more even emission of radio across the whole spectrum, which, which in itself does make it very odd. Now, the, the team that discovered this, they also recently discovered another pair of galaxy clusters uh, where again there was an exchange of matter at relativistic velocities, but these two pairs were much closer together and they were not able to detect any radio waves coming from the connecting matter. But when we look at this image, it does reveal some very interesting clues. Here again, we're talking about two giant clusters of galaxies but there is a clear duality between these two. One is creating very strong X-ray emissions with a very distinctive L-shapes all over them. And again, this is similar to what I discussed last week when we looked at Sagittarius A. Now, the overall shape is also interesting. It is almost like a giant dish, or actually, if you look even more closely, like a scorpion. Now, mainstream will tell you that these emissions are, are driven by supermassive black holes. On the other side, uh, we see that the other cluster has a large, looks like a comet-shaped plasma envelope. Almost like the, uh, if you were to just look at it as, as an image, like this giant dish of the scorpion has shot this giant plasma ball towards the other cluster of galaxies. This cluster is moving away from the other one, as shown by the arrow in the diagram. It, again, it is in this diagram, it is important to remember that the dots that we see in this diagram, they are not stars, but these are, are galaxies. This, the scale of both of these is phenomenal. We're talking on a, on a cosmical scale. So what do both of these images tell us? Well, firstly, it confirms that our universe is filled with plasma. Wherever we look, we see more and more of it. Also, this uh, plasma is not dormant, but in a lot of cases, it is undergoing movement. And the question is, what causes that movement? And that's not necessarily always that clear. We also know that, that these structures, so that the galaxy clusters are, are forming on what we can see is these large filament structures. And here we're seeing that between these two, uh, the, the filament structure is active. We don't know what causes it, but clearly in terms of, of a connection, that's what we would expect from an electric universe. We would expect these Birkeland currents to be connecting all structures. The, the question is what is causing this extra energy to cause these radio emissions? And, and I think lastly, what is also interesting is that it is very much a directional flow. We're seeing in this diagram that there is a flow from one direction to other. It is not a, a backwards and forwards. There's, there's definitely a flow. So the question is, do these structures, so particularly when we look at the, uh, I'm just going to call it the scorpion because I, I find it such a fascinating shape that it's in there. But do these sorts of structures, these massive super clusters of galaxies, and again, if we think back, we know that each galaxy has its own uh, galactic circuit. So the question is, do these all add up to create uh, a, a super cluster circuit? Is there such a thing? And is that like an engine? And, and are we seeing here one active engine, which is driving the current forward? Is this like a sort of cosmical engine bringing life to new regions of the universe? Now, I would like to do a separate episode looking at, at all the evidence because there's a lot more evidence when maybe more down at a galactic scale, not at a, a cluster scale. But there is a lot of evidence to suggest interconnectedness at a lot of different layers, um, not necessarily always reported as that, but certainly evidence that suggests that there is this movement of current between not just stars, not just galaxies, but now also the clusters of galaxies. So again, I would like to go through all of the evidence for that. But as always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.